Well, good evening and welcome to our program tonight for uh, sophomore college planning. You know, a lot of times uh, as I talk to people about this, they say, well, you know, shouldn't you just be waiting till junior year to start with college planning because, you know, I have to worry about it till the senior year and that sort of thing. And, you know, there were some eyes that got kind of big last week when I was meeting with the sophomores about their rec sheets and indicated to them that, you know, you realize that your transcript that you're going to use for applying to college is now half complete. Because, oh, yeah, we only have six semesters to get ready for that college application because we have to be ready to apply to school the August of our senior year. You turn a little bit and people realize, oh, yeah, this, this isn't quite the way as I thought it was. And uh, that can be kind of a scary thought. And our real purpose for, for getting together tonight and talking about the whole issue is to lessen some of that uncertainty and some of that, that fear and concern that's out there about what, is, what are the next couple of years going to look like? And more importantly, what is this next step going to look like that happens just after these next couple of years are, are complete? So that's what we're here for tonight. Thanks for joining us. And uh, hopefully it'll be a, a beneficial experience for you in terms of thinking through what, the, what these next, uh, next couple of years are going to look like. So let's begin with a word of prayer. Holy Father, we thank you for this opportunity we have to gather here to, uh, to be about the business of nurturing and caring for these young people. God, we thank you for uh, uh, blessing us with their lives and uh, their gifts and their passions and their interests and, and uh, just for creating them who they are. Lord, give us uh, insight and, and wisdom uh, now to, to provide that guidance that they need to, um, to, to move to where you've called them to be to use those gifts and talents and abilities to the best of, of uh, their capability and to, uh, to do that in a way that will truly make a difference in the world, just as you've called them to make as your people. In your name, amen. Okay, so start by uh, talking a little bit here about uh, the, um, our uh, uh, mission statement, just because we want to talk specifically about, you know, what it is that we do as a school that's really oriented towards um, providing kids with the the tools and the background that they need to be successful with they're going in the in the future here i'm going to check this chat here real quick just to make sure that there isn't any kind of technical issue with what's going on with the people in zoom land and it looks like we're okay so just wanted to make sure okay um <clears throat> So this is just a quick breakdown. It kind of reminds us why we're here a little bit. We see that what happens to us in terms of our educational level has a big impact for us in terms of our earning capabilities, our future job capabilities, et cetera. Now, there's more to it than that. And I, and I hope to talk about what the, the journey to a college choice and, and a career experience and, and so on really involves. But, but this is a part of it. And, and it's, a, it's kind of one of those indicators that helps us see that this is an investment that we're making, yes, in, in terms of our kids' uh, high school education, but also in terms of their, their college experiences as well. And as I mentioned, I'd like to talk about, you know, it's really significant in terms of accomplishing what we want to accomplish here with, uh, um, uh, with the, the future of your student. And so I'd like to start talking about the core values that, that we express as a school. First of all, you know, recognize we see your student as, as an individual child of God that, that's got all sorts of unique abilities and talents and passions and interests. And we want to really spend the next couple of years helping them to kind of discover what some of that is. And um, uh, one of the things I talked with them about as I met with them about their rec sheets was, okay, going in your junior year is when you can start picking some other classes that you would want, like to take. You know, you've got five that you have to take. You've got a couple that are optional for you now. So let's think about what those are. You know, should it be continuing on with the foreign language? Because that's going to be a, a, an important part of what I do. Is it going to be continuing on with, with fine arts in, in some fashion? Because that's going to be a big part of what I do. Is it going to be science because I want to go into to pre-med? Is it going to be engineering because I want to go that route? Is it uh, business and accounting because I want to go that route? So we're, we're kind of at that state of exploring, but really exploring who God created him to be. And, um, and so that's, you know, we don't want to, we don't want to think that, okay, you know, the world's come these, these different pictures that indicate for us what some, some valued careers are. And those are the things that we should shoot for, because that's what's going to get us the fame or the fortune or, or whatever it is. 
you know, our, our orientation is really about who is it that God created us to be. And so that's that's why we start with this idea of, of looking at this from a Christ-centered perspective. You know, the excellence element is, is key here. And we've talked about that already as with students and, and said, you know, um, as we take a look at what the future looks like for, for you in terms of college and, and scholarships and those sorts of things, um, we talk a bit and we'll get it into a little bit more later about uh, uh, college testing and this whole issue that's become pretty significant in the last 18 months, the whole issue of, um, uh, okay, so what does that mean? What's the impact of that? Well, you know, those, those tests have a pretty specific purpose and it has to do determine which students are, are ready for a college experience and are likely to be successful in a college experience. One of the things I've talked with kids about is the fact that, um, you know, colleges get, get ranked and that ranking they receive is pretty important to them in terms of their marketability. Um, and a key factor of that ranking is uh, dealing with that issue of how many freshmen come in at the front door and how many leave out the back door four years later with a degree and a career or an avenue towards grad school. That's the biggest element that colleges need to be concerned about when it comes to, to their ranking. Well, if that's the case, how are they going to make sure that you know, they don't have a ton of people coming in from the front door, but not too many of them graduating out the back door. Well, okay, we want to make sure those ones we bring in the front door, door are, are, are ready to, to, to accomplish that goal in four years and, and so on. Well, how do we determine that? Well, that's been a big part of the purpose of college entrance testing. I gave a, a, a from what students were, were likely to be successful and be able to graduate and, and go on and so on. Well, if we're not looking at those college entrance tests anymore, what are we looking at? Well, the only thing that's left is a transcript. And so looking at classes that we're taking, grades that we're receiving on that transcript just became more important than it's ever been. And so when we're talking about, okay, so what classes do I wanna take next year? Oh yeah, that is a pretty big deal. Okay, and you know, my wife's a former PE teacher, so I've got nothing against PE, but you see the difference between taking an extra year of PE class versus taking another year of a dual credit science class. One of them is gonna go quite a ways to helping prove to that university that I'm ready for college level coursework and the other's not. So those decisions about what that looks like in terms of just a course selection process is huge, but that also assumes that you know, we're putting everything we have into this process and demonstrating all the excellence that we're capable of. And, and recognize that you know, every student um, has got that capability of excellence. It's just not all in the same place, okay? I, I talked to kids up front about the fact that, you know, for me, yeah, math was, was a place where I demonstrated all the excellence I could. And in algebra one, that meant a C. And that I worked harder on that class than any other class. And that was it. Now, social studies was another thing. I could, I could pull A's in those kind of classes without any kind of an issue. So obviously when I became a teacher, I didn't become a math teacher, I became a social studies teacher. So, and, and for some kids that's gonna be, it's gonna be med school. For some it's gonna be, you know, an accountant or some it's gonna be lawyer, some of it's gonna be teacher, for some it's gonna be a heavy equipment operator. And that's okay. It's the excellence issue. Are we doing the best that we can do with the gifts God gave us? That's, that's what we're looking for. So, you know, sometimes when I'm, it's, and it's tough sitting with kids and passing out PSAT scores and, and some of them, yeah, that, that was just not, not good news. Well, but you know what? Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I passed out to the juniors ASVAB scores, which also test math and, and, and English and language and those sorts of things. But, you know, it also tests some other areas like engineering, electronics and like that. And, and there were some kids that for the first time, they got a good score on one of those kind of tests. And okay, so it was in the engineering part, but okay, that, that's great. Or it was in the electronics part, or it was in, you know, something else that was mechanically oriented because that's their area where their excellence can shine. So that's what we're really concerned about. And you need to be delivered out as parents is, is, is you know, getting into that, that student's head a little bit and, and, and saying, okay, you know, all the years you've been growing up, this is the thing you really like doing. 
this is what you've always been good at. This is what you've always enjoyed. And, you know, sometimes kids are still at that point, especially boys, that they don't realize that yet. They haven't figured some of that kind of stuff out. It's just a developmental issue. Okay, their, their brain's that prefrontal cortex that does that kind of rational thinking, hasn't, hasn't fully developed yet. It's going to be a while. Um, but in the meantime, we as parents, you know, kind of need to help them along and saying, well, you know, do you realize that, that this is something you've always been good at? Have you thought about the fact that this is the kind of career it can turn into? And, and so some of those, those sorts of discussions are going to be key, just helping them see and understand where their excellence is at. Service is, as I talk to kids about that, talk about the fact that, you know, service is recognizing that the gifts God gave you aren't yours. They're for you to use to make a difference in the life of someone else. Who is out there? that you could make a life-changing difference for with the gifts that you have. That's a key part of the decision-making process. Yes, you wanna, you wanna make a living at it and that sort of thing, but you know, when making that living doesn't mean anything, the bank account doesn't either. When doing what God's really created you to do and called you to do means something to you and to the life of someone else, okay, that's something that, that enables you to reach that point where it's no longer a job. It really is just a service to people that fortunately I get paid for, but I love doing it anyway. And so again, sometimes, you know, we need to help kids kind of walk through that sort of perspective on what college can be about or what career can be about and that sort of thing. But that's, that's why this is one of the things that we talk about as a school. Um, Harmony is realizing that, you know what, I'm going to need to be able to work together with all sorts of people in this world. And so I might as well start working on that now and, and understanding that all sorts of pe different people in this world all have their own gifts and abilities and talents and interests too. And it's okay if theirs are different from mine and it's okay that mine is different from theirs. And it's okay that mine is important, even though the world might value this particular gift because it just seems really popular and those people make a lot of money or they always end up on TV or whatever. My gift's just as important as theirs. And it's because all of our gifts work together that the world works in harmony and everybody you know, can function together and that sort of thing. So those are things for you to think about as you're, as you're really connecting with your kid over the next couple of years and helping them walk through this process of, of where am I going with college and with life and, and so on. Okay. Um, you know, there's some things for you to think about as parents. And I, and I kind of put this up there as a parent, some parent questions. You know, think about this in the context of where you were at when you were the age of your, your child now, and what was helpful to you and what wasn't. And think back to that and use that as kind of a launch pad to put yourself into their shoes. Say, so, you know, when I was at this stage of life, this was what was difficult for me. I bet you if I talk to them about it, they, they'll, they'll admit that it's difficult for them too. So, you know, find some avenues to, to open up those, those conversations. And some of these questions might just spur some things for you to, um, uh, to talk about and, and so on that, that'll be helpful to you as you, as you, as you work with them. Um, for, for students, you know, these are some of the questions where I'm going to answer all these tonight. We don't have much time, but I'm going to be getting together with you guys as sophomores a number of times between now and the end of the year to talk about some of this kind of stuff. So that some of these terms like majors and minors and gen eds and, and so on will, will have a meaning to you. So, you know, that's going to happen. Um, but just realize there's a lot that, that is going to go into this process and we're going to be spending really the next five months uh, going over because I'm going to be into sophomore classrooms two, three times uh, yet this, this spring for a full period talking about all this kind of stuff as it relates to what college is about, what to look for, how to do visits, what my career interests are, all those sorts of things. And we'll continue on in some of that kind of stuff as, as juniors um, as well. Okay. Um, so again, let's talk a little bit about the colleges and what they want. And we talked about this uh, just briefly before, but the GPA and, and so on has become that much more, more prominent now because of what we're talking about relative to test optional and, and those sorts of things. Um, so, you know, this is, this is significant. And so, again, as we take a look at honors credit and course selections for next year, we want to be thinking about the, the significance of that and the impact of that. I've got some uh, sheets here, some handouts of our 
uh, rec sheets, not only for, for next year, which hopefully you've already seen because they should have brought those home. And I've, and I've got the, the rec sheet for senior year as well. So you can kind of see, okay, what's the next two years gonna look like in terms of course selection and what that can look like uh, for us uh, farther down the road. So GPA obviously is key, but just important as I mentioned before is the classes that you take. Um, and uh, the program that we have is, is built around, you know, meeting the requirements that colleges expect. And so when we're talking about math, you need to at least get through Algebra 2 because that's, that's really an expectation that colleges want to see that you, you completed Algebra 2. Now, for, you know, for those of you that are in uh, uh, Honors Algebra 2 now, you know, that's great. You've got some great opportunities for you to go on from there into pre-calc and, and calc and get some college credit and, and all those sorts of things. So, you know, that's, that's going to be some, some, uh, some pretty exciting stuff for you. Um, one of the things I always want to make sure, sure that kids uh, recognize is that there's three years of math and, and science and social studies involved here. But then we also have uh, the flex credits, which are basically like STEM credits. Because a lot of colleges wanna see more than three years of math and science. Now we've kind of set up a system to give you some flexibility or is why we call it the flex credits. If you, instead of just taking four years of science and four years of math, what if I wanna do engineering? Well, I can't do all of that. Okay, well do the engineering and do the math and don't do the science. Or if you're doing the med route, then do the science and do the math and don't do the engineering. So that's why that kind of flexibility is there for, for kids to do that, because they really do need more than just three years of math and science. Um, we include the fine arts with that, uh, just because we certainly want to encourage and for some of our kids, that is the direction that they're going. And so um, that provides the flexibility for them to, to pursue that, spend some extra time in that field uh, as well. Okay. Um, Recognizing that, uh, again, the distinction between regular and honors and credit and AP credit and that sort of thing is pretty significant. Just to, just to kind of clarify some things about that, to make a distinction about the difference between dual credit and AP credit. AP credit is, um, uh, is, really, is, is really unique in the fact that it's solely based on the test score that you get on the AP test. I know we hear a lot about AP classes, and, and yes, the idea behind that is, is to get you ready for the class, but taking an AP class in and of itself means nothing except you get high school credit for it. You don't get the college credit unless you get the score that you need on the test. For some kids, that idea of a high stakes test like that is just not real fun, and, and so that's, that's kind of you know, self-defeating right, right out of the gate because that, that one day in May, if it doesn't turn out well, you know, all I have is, is a, a, a good course experience, hopefully, but I don't have any college credit. Dual credit is different in the fact that those classes are actually college classes. They have to be taught by a, a teacher that's qualified to be a college professor. They have to be with a college level curriculum, with college level testing, and essentially college level expectations all around. And so those just are college level classes. And so you get whatever grades you get, you get the credit because you finish the class and you pass the class and you got the grade and you do get a college transcript. Um, so that kids like a lot better for the fact that it, it, it foregoes that high stakes test issue. The other part is the thing that I like about it is the fact that it does give them a very significant similar college course experience. So that first week that they're on campus and their first coursework, they're taking classes for the first time, sort of. They're gonna walk into those classrooms and those profs are gonna pass out the, the, the syllabi and our kids are gonna be able to look at that and say, oh yeah, I've, I've done this before, I can do this. And so that level of confidence I think is key for us because we know those kids are, are gonna walk into that kind of experience with the, with the, the self, a confidence to be able to say, yeah, I can do this and, and, and bring a level of success to that, that first uh, college step that is hopefully then going to be a great launch point to, to a four-year career that's going to get them where they want to go. But that's, um, that's uh, the importance and the distinction of dual credit. Um, honors classes don't carry uh, 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 college credit with them per se, they do carry the benefit of the additional uh, honors credit for GPA. And again, because of the significance of GPA right now, that's a pretty big deal. So one of the things I talked with kids about is in our honors program, if I'm in, a, in, in regular English right now and I get an A both semesters in regular English, I can get recommended for honors English for junior year. That's a pretty big deal because if I can get into junior honors English, then I'm getting for senior honors English and I can walk out of senior honors English with six English college credits, three in lit 
and three in comp. And I've got pretty much my college English requirements done, if not almost done. So that's a pretty big deal. So, you know, all right. So all right, maybe I pulled a B for a semester in English. Okay. So in the back of your mind, you got to be thinking, yeah, but if you would have spent a little bit extra time studying that vocab, and if you would have actually read those stories before you went to class, could you've gotten the A? Okay, well, do you see what that's going to cost you if you don't get the A now? Um, you know, and, and particularly the difference in, in GPA and with the honors class, that, that's going to have a, a pretty significant outcome. And we went through a whole, um, a whole layout of the mathematical uh, calculation of GPAs and what happens if I spend the first couple of years kind of coasting on GPA and not too worried about where that's going to be. And then all of a sudden I decide I need to, to kind of crank things up a little bit. And so I spend the next two semesters really cranking it up only to find out that after six semesters, my GPA has not gone up very much because I, I didn't catch the math of averaging in six uh, semesters. And I only did a good job with two of them. The other four are still dragging me down. So, you know, those are some reasons why what's happening right now in terms of the classes we're taking and the credit that we're either getting or not getting when it comes to potential future scholarships as well as college admissions. So, um, you know, talk to your student about that. You just got the grades from last semester. You can see that on Skyward. Talk to, those situ talk to them about those situations where, okay, so let, let's go to Mrs. G and find out what do I need to do to get you ready to recommend me for junior honors English next year. And then do it. Okay. Um, we do have some info, info here yet about ACT scores. I do want to talk about that for, for a couple of reasons. First of all, you know, a lot of schools are test option, but a lot of kids are opting to still take the tests. Okay. So don't think that because they're test optional, it's, that's, you know, that just means I don't have to do it at all. It could still be very much to your advantage to do it. Even if you don't get a 30 on the ACT, you know, getting a 24 is, is significant to them. It's, again, they recognize this tells them something about the likelihood of you being able to successfully complete four years of college. Right away from that. The other thing to think about is while there's a lot of great publicity that comes out when schools come out and say that they're test optional, the fine print says they're test optional for admissions. The fine print also says they're not test optional for scholarship. In most cases, that's that's so that still leaves you in the point of okay, so if I do want some merit-based scholars scholarships, I still got to take the test. Yeah, that's 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 what it means. So keep that in mind. Um, we spent some time talking about different tests, and I've got some samples over for both the SAT and the ACT and that sort of thing. Just uh, this will be coming up more next. We'll talk about more as juniors, but um, it, it's 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 not a huge deal which test it is. Colleges, virtually all colleges now, will accept either test. The one thing I do tell kids, though, it probably makes more sense for you to take the test the college you're going to is most familiar with so that they're doing an apples to apples comparison between you and the rest of their population that's applying. And for most colleges in the Midwest, that's ACT. SAT is East Coast and West Coast, and ACT is, is everything else. So questions on anything, feel free to raise your hand and, and let me know. Um, just some, some things to keep in mind as we're talking about all this kind of stuff with, with studying and grades and, and getting in honors classes and that sort of thing. Just some basic things for you to remember, students. I've got a handout there uh, back there on the table about some things that are helpful in terms of uh, uh, you know, future um, uh, results and what you need to do to get where you want to get. And, and the thing that, it, again, we talk about when it comes to, to, to uh, um, uh, college testing, you know, ACT says, blank, you know, if you want to improve your ACT score, there's only two things that matter take hard classes and do your homework. That's, that's it. Yeah, you can do pre test prep classes, help you refresh what you've hopefully already learned when you took hard classes and did your homework. So that's, there's no secret to it. It's, it's just work, but you probably already knew that. Okay. Um, Keep in mind, again, that as, as colleges are, are taking a look at, at you know, 
kind of fewer options in terms of what to evaluate for student uh, relative to, to grades and test grades. Again, what else are they looking at? The rest of the is becoming more and more important. And so one of the things I do to, to even freshmen about and sophomores is you should be developing a resume. And, and back for freshmen, they set up a Google Doc that was college planning, okay? Hopefully they can still find that. And on that document should be some of the test results of things that we did in, in freshman year. So we did the Reese motivational profile to kind of get a, a beginning idea of what sort of things motivate them. What do they get excited about? That sort of thing. Uh, we did a spiritual gifts inventory. You know, to that, we'll be adding uh, this year the, the uh, pre-ACT score. Then next year, we'll add the PSAT score. Uh, we'll add some, uh, uh, some other things that, uh, uh, that just help paint that picture of things that they're good at and what they enjoy and, and that sort of thing. Um, but uh, the, the, the re one of the real purposes of, of starting to pull all that stuff together and providing that document to put it on is again to that college planning document, all the stuff you've been doing that can go on a resume. So by the time you're reaching the end of your junior year and you need to start putting that resume together to, to send it out, you've got a list of stuff that otherwise some of which you probably would have forgotten about. But that resume becomes more and more important because um, colleges can have the statistical evidence for just about everything. I mean, they, they study everything. That's why they're a university and so on. But one of the things that they study is exactly what type of student is it that comes to our university and finishes four years later successfully. Well, they, they found that, yes, some of it has to do with, with, with scores and grades and, and those sorts of things, but that's not the only component of it. It's not the only part that matters because part of what is, is a key to the whole college experience is the issue of, of, of fitting into that campus experience and being, feeling comfortable there and, and feeling like you belong and, and wanting to come back next fall and, and that sort of thing. So um, part of what they see is that if you come to campus, and you get involved and you become a part of that community, then it's more likely to come back. Family, part of that culture, part of that community. To come here and dig in and get involved. Well, it's easy. We take a look at their high school resume. And if it says on their high school resume that this is what they did in high school, there's a really good that this is what they're going to do in college. And if this is what they do when they get to college, they're part of our community and they're going to stay because they've connected here. And so, you know, and this is, this is one of the things that to think about in terms of, of um, you know, your college selection process, because some people have talk about, you know, I don't know that, that, you know, my kid's going to go through a small place like Rockford Lutheran and then be ready to go to a place like UW Madison or UI. Well, you know, uh, you guys got 15,000 freshmen, but your kid's not going to make friends with 15,000 freshmen. They're going to make friends with the people that they have a connection with, that they've got something in common with, the people that they identify with. And who's that going to be? Well, if they play volleyball here, it's probably going to be with other college freshman volleyball players. Now, we're not talking D1 and the, and the, you know, the university team kind of thing. But most every university, especially major universities, they've got varsity sports, they've got club sports, they've got mural sports. It's huge programs of, of those club teams that actually do travel to other universities and compete. And you know, obviously some of them are really pretty good. And then huge numbers of kids that play intramurals because I always played volleyball in high school. I still like it. I'm not good enough to be on a team, but I like doing it. I like hanging out with the other people that do it. We speak the same language, we have the same experience. And so that becomes the place where they fit in. Or 15. That's still going to be the place where they fit in. And so a school like ours, where we really facilitate kids getting involved in a lot of activities, prepares them for connecting with the university, for fitting in, whether it's in sports or it's in drama or it's in music or fill in the blank. So, you know, that's a big part of our encouraging them to get involved in those sorts of things and building a great resume, because that resume is going to show the university that I'm somebody that I just don't come here for classes. I come here to get involved and I connect and I'm a part of this, this community. Um, 
So doing that in sports and drama and music, you know, leadership activities are significant. College is looking for more than somebody just involved with Key Club. Did you, were you an officer in Key Club or a class officer, et cetera? So look for those sorts of things, especially sophomore. Now that, you know, you're kind of moving up the food chain a little bit as juniors. Yeah, you should be, you know, seeking those kind of class offices, student council office positions, uh, leadership positions in organizations like Key Club and so on, uh, or even captain of, of a team and and those sorts of things. Yeah, that's stuff you want to put on your in your resume someday because that's going to mean something. College application or a scholarship application. Okay. Keep in mind that the stuff we're saying about colleges can also be duplicated over to scholarship agencies like foundations that you know have money to give out. They're not going to open up their checkbook for somebody that they aren't pretty darn sure is going to make it for four years because they don't want to pass out the money to somebody that's going to bail in, in two years. So they want to look for test scores, resumes too. They want to look for leadership skills too, because they know, again, those are the people that are most likely statistically proven to complete in, in, uh, in four years. So look for those sorts of things. And outside of school is, is helpful too, you know, community activities. Um, you know, get involved in, in helping uh, various cultures and different people of different socioeconomic status and that sort of thing. That's huge because it demonstrates some, some character of, of, of your student and, and the kind of things they care about and the kind of things they're willing to get involved with and the kind of people they're willing to help and touch and, and, and so on. So, um, yeah, those are all, all very important things for you to be, to be building as part of your experience here at Rockford Lutheran. Okay. Um, so... Just some some keys here to, to things to think about for the for the future, and I, I kind of throw these together here, um, as you as you want to be starting to think about uh, like a strategic. Plan. What do I need to do this month? What do I need to do this semester? What do I need to do this summer? There's some handouts back there that talk about the college path. There's one for kids and there's one for parents, and it kind of breaks that down into the time frame, especially starting junior year. Um, but but I, you know. One of the things that, that I remind kids of, you're done with your college search process August of your senior year because many colleges have October 15, November 1, November 15 application deadlines. So if you wanna be at the front end of that application process, you don't have time to search colleges and, and explore colleges your senior year. That's done when you get here in August. August, you start filling out the applications, you start getting the recommendations from your teachers, you start filling out, start working on FAFSA, we'll talk about that down the road, um, and, and you get that with turning in a dozen applications, there's nothing wrong with that, I'm not saying that you have to know what school you're going to in August, you, you're just done with your search, you need to know where you're going to apply to. That then you'll be, you'll be, uh, you know, in a position to sit and wait for, for results. And, and then you make a decision later on your senior year. But the point is be strategic about that time between now and then. Okay, this is the stuff I need to do like this month and this semester and this summer and first semester next year and that sort of thing. But plan that out. That's what some of these questions are here for. And there's some, there's some uh, uh, tools here and I'm online. So you'll be able to get back to all these, that kind of thing. Just give you some, some direction in terms of where to to uh, to be in the hunt for that kind of planning process. Um, one of the, the obviously big topics for for what we're dealing with here is how am I going to pay for all of this? Um, a lot of different ways to go about that. Some of it, you know, some of it you pay for when you go home tonight and do your math, and you and you study for that vocab test, and you spend a little extra time rewriting that essay and and cleaning it up a little bit more, because the biggest money that's available there for college, we hear a lot of athletics, there's nothing wrong with that, but the money's in the grades, okay? And even if you're in athletics, I can tell you, and Mr. Jones will tell you the same thing, we have college recruiters come in here, and yeah, the first question is, you know, you got this graduating this year that looks good. And the second question is, what are their grades? Because college coaches are not gonna invest money in a student that does not have a high likelihood of being successful for all four years. Because you're not gonna be a varsity athlete that's gonna be a varsity freshman year. They're gonna to have to invest some money in you to get you to that point. And they're not gonna do that unless they know you're gonna be around 
for junior senior year. So all those sorts of things are important because that those grades and those scholarship opportunities are the number one avenue for, for, uh, for funding for school. Yeah, athletics can be part of it, certainly is. For some people, it's full ride for very few. Okay, that's a very small percentage of athletic scholarships. Most of them are partial athletic scholarships. And there's nothing wrong with that. Um, and there's a lot of music scholarships. Kids, you know, every year we've got kids that, get, that are involved in that sort of thing because, you know, not many high schools have really good music programs. So, you know, the colleges and universities are short of good instrumentalists and, and good singers and, 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 you know, orchestra and that sort of thing. So continue to pursue that. Um, I'm here to, to, uh, to, to college and uh, three of them had partial athletic scholarships. And as you can probably guess, I mean, that wasn't exactly something that they inherited genetically, um, something they just worked at. Um, and, and three of them had music scholarships. And we didn't pay for all sorts of fancy lessons. Our kids went through the band program at Rockford Lutheran and the choir program here and that sort of thing. And, you know, $20,000 for four years of playing band. Uh, and, and uh, you know, I would have told him, well, yeah, he probably would have played anyway because he, he liked going to NCAA tournaments and Valpo goes to basketball tournaments and guess who gets to go to the basketball team? You know, the band. So all sorts of benefits of that. But but those are very legit ways for you to be thinking about how you're going to pay for college. So there's other things to take a look at too, but your, your grades and, and so on are going to be the key, the key element. There are some other um, uh, tuition benefit programs that are out there and, and some of them are state sponsored and that sort of thing. Uh, some tax benefit uh, elements that come into play uh, as you get to, uh, to that where your students are in college. So make sure you about that sort of stuff with your tax accountant and, and those sorts of things. But um, most of the money is available for, um, uh, for college uh, scholarships uh, is for grades. A very high percentage of that comes from the university themselves. And um, uh, one of the things that I, that I, I wanna make sure I always mention to, to sophomores, especially because you're at the front end of this, okay, what colleges should I go visit? What your colleges should I look at kind of a thing. By all means, don't get the idea that because I'm spending so much money to send my kids to Rockford Lutheran, I'm not gonna be able to send them to a private college. That is absolutely not true. There are a lot of kids that come from our school that go to a good quality private university for less than what they'd pay to go to a state university. Especially in the state of Illinois, there's not that much funding for, for people in terms of, of, of state uh, university scholarships and, and merit and all those sorts of things. So. There's a lot of kids that, that come from our school that, that end up with some really great deals at some really good universities for a really good price because they want our kids. They, they know that you know, kids that come from a program like ours do well, and that's, that's who they want to fill their classrooms with. So, yeah, just a number to think about. But as you're thinking about of what schools to visit, don't, don't count any schools out. Um, I threw some, some forms back there, some sample schools and sample costs. Some of them are a year or two old, but they're pretty close to current um, and sample scholarship options that are available for them and that sort of thing. And there's, there's a lot of good, really good opportunities out there for you. So, um, and you know, the other thing is I had four kids and believe me, I benefited from the fact that it makes a big difference on FAFSA if you got more than one kid in college at a time. I had more than one kid in college at a time for like 10 years. So that, that worked out in a beneficial fashion for me. Um, so, you know, there's, there are ways in which you can just work. Don't, don't count any of those sorts of things out. And I can tell you about some schools too. We'll get into it next year where, you know, we've got kids that have gone to that university and their tuition cost was less than it was for them to go to Rockford Lutheran. And that was a private Christian university. So there's great options out there. Don't count anything out, especially at this point. Um, a lot of places here where you can go and get some more information about all the stuff that we're talking about. Um, studentaid.gov is where you'll get information about FAFSA and, and the government process for, for qualifying for uh, student grants and, and uh, scholarships and loans and those sorts of things. Um, one of the things we'll talk about and, and hopefully I get a chance to show you a little bit um, on our counselor's corner uh, page of, of our uh, school website. I've got a number of tools that you can use. Some other great tools here for taking a look at at uh, college scholarship possibilities. So there's a lot out there. It takes some time to get it out there. So 
the details of what that's going to look like, we'll talk about when you're a senior. We'll have a whole night like this just for financial aid. We'll have somebody from the state that'll come in and help us with that and, and share all sorts of other info. Um, for now, I just want to let you know, don't, you know, don't count schools out because you think you're not going to be able to afford private education, for example, because um, it's, just, uh, it's just not true. Um, one of the things I always make sure that kids realize, too, is that you know, there's other factors that come into this that have to do with, with uh, getting into school and not getting into school. And this is something, Ascend EDU is, is one of the, the systems that colleges use for uh, uh, transcripts and sorts of things. Um, I have the same kind of question I have to answer on the Common App. And so, you know, I tell kids, you gotta be about this now because you don't wanna do something now September, October of your senior year when I'm filling out your common app and I have to put down there, yeah, you got, you got suspended. You know, especially if it was for, for something like getting like 30 tardies, which yeah, you theoretically can get suspended for just having nothing but tardies. That's a really bad reason to get a suspension and have something like this that has to get reported on your college application. So, you know, just be smart. Um, so what's the process look like? When do you start searching? One of the things, as I mentioned, we're gonna be doing this year with, with sophomores is uh, the pre-ACT. Along with that comes some pretty extensive um, uh, uh, career search uh, uh, activities. Um, we do some more career search activities. There's some really great tools that ASVAB has with that that we'll be doing in their junior year. So that's kind of our focus uh, right now is thinking about you know, what, what do I want to be looking for? Because, and again, this is where we come into the, the, the course selection process too, is, you know, engineering, well, that, that kind of points me a certain direction for a certain number of schools that obviously offer that because not all of them do. Uh, and I think it's something that's pre-med, well, that's going to be, you know, a certain set of schools too that have really good quality programs for getting kids into pre-med and getting them accepted and getting them through their MCATs and all those sorts of things. Um, you know, or my thinking nursing or my thinking teaching or my thinking, you know, having some kind of an idea of what direction we want to go is helpful as you begin the, the search process. So that's why we're spending some time now going through the, the tools for, you know, what do I want to major in? And there's some more tools for that on the, the school website as well. When do you start making visits? You know, pretty much anytime you're ready. And, and I suggest that you start doing that like this next summer, at least. Um, and, uh, you know, and you can look at one of the things I encourage is, is uh, making visits over spring break because a lot of colleges are in session while they're on spring break. So start making visits. You know, if you're going to go visit grandma for Easter Sunday, you know, leave a couple of days earlier and stop off and catch a few universities on the way. Very typically, and right now COVID, I don't know, it's in a different place for different people and, and how they're handled is dependent upon the university, but a lot of them have started accepting visits again. So, you know, look into that because again, one of the things that they realize is they've got a lot better chance of you ending up there as a student if they get you on their campus. So, you know, start, start working on that now because you really should be looking at that summer after your junior year. That's your time when you might wanna be doing a second visit to your top three or four schools. Okay, so I visited a bunch, I've communicated with a bunch. Now's when I want to kind of narrow things down and say, okay, out of these three, let me visit those three once more. And, and that's going to help me narrow down what I want to do. So you kind of want to leave some time that last summer to do that. Now you might, you know, you might not have that situation that, and that's okay, but it's better off getting a head start on the game and not being crunched for time that last summer, as opposed to waiting too late and not starting until that last summer. And then, and then you're, you're kind of out of luck. Like I said, you're, you're done with the search process in August because in addition to a lot of schools having November deadlines, um, FAFSA, which is the forms you fill out to, to determine qualification for federal aid, opens in October. So the idea is when you turn in an October or November application, you can also turn in your scholarship uh, information with FAFSA. So the university will get back to you with an acceptance letter and a scholarship package. Okay, but if they're turning back scholarship packages to, to prospective accepted students in November, 
that means they're setting aside that money for your student with the likelihood that they're gonna come. If you're not applying until December or January, they might still have seats open, but a lot of that money has already been allocated to somebody else who got in line ahead of you. So that's why a real key here is, what do I need to do to get to the front of that line? Well, I need to be done searching by August so that I can just focus on get my applications in and get my FAFSA in and, and be at the front of the line for the for the seats that are open and for the and for the scholarship money that's available. One thing I tell talk to the students about, we've gone to a lot uh, Marquette a number of times from here. We've got a lot of kids that have gone there. Uh, obviously it's a great school. They've got seats for 2000 freshmen every year. That's that's their max. By December, they're gonna have 16,000 applications for those 2000 seats. So I, you know, I tell kids, okay, you know, if you're planning on applying to Marquette over Christmas break, <laughs> don't bother uh, because they've already got, you know, way more applications than they're even going to look seriously at. So anyway, that's the type of thing that, that drives these sorts of, of things about um, uh, when to start your search and, and uh, when to start your business. And, that's, and we've got some materials back there to help you in terms of what kind of questions you should ask and that sort of thing. So feel free to, uh, to take a look at that. This is a really cool website, the College Essay Guy. Um, a lot of free materials there that having to do with applications and obviously college essays. Um, but take a look at the, a lot of what, uh, what he's got. There. There's a lot of free things there. He does make money by having you go through programs that he, he uh, has for writing college essays, which again, if there's no testing, a lot of colleges are saying, okay, so instead of that, we want an essay. Well, that essay just got more important. And so you've got resources like this. And this is, a, this is really a pretty good one. Uh, so keep that in mind. But um, again, there's some information here on uh, uh, our school websites available for you. We've got a, a page on the Facebook page where we post all sorts of things about scholarships, especially. The other thing I'll tell you to start thinking about now, and this is something to, to look for, at, particularly this summer after your sophomore year, a lot of colleges will have um, some kind of summer program, summer weekend camps, a week-long camp. You know, it might be a, uh, an explorer's camp having to do with uh, aeronautics or it might be engineering or it might be pre-med or it might be veterinary or it might be education as a career that sort of thing they'll have they'll have programs like that where high school kids can come there and just kind of get a college experience see what that's like uh, and get a get a feel for what this potential future career could be like great experience for for, for students it's also a way that those universities get to know whether or not your student is somebody that they want so particularly if you're looking at a more selective school, that can be a great way to get your foot in the door. Northwestern, for example, has a lot of those types of, of summer programs. And kids that we've had from here that have gone to Northwestern, in many cases, have done those summer programs. They've gotten to know Northwestern, Northwestern's gotten to know them. And so that, that's something that you can can or too. That, some of that kind of stuff is what we post but um, keep your eye out for that. As your student is taking some of these tests, like the pre-ACT and the PSAT and that sort of thing, they'll have the opportunity to get on some mailing lists. I know it creates a lot of junk mail for you and that sort of thing, but it also creates some of this kind of information that can be helpful for you for uh, those sorts of summer workshops. But if you get involved in those summer workshops now, you're, you're, uh, after your sophomore year, again, that gets you ahead of the game a little bit in terms of, you know, is this a career I like or am I not excited about it or, or what? Um, I've got, a, we've got a count set up for the class of 2024 for remind.com. That's what I use to let them know about college visits coming up and testing that's coming up and other deadlines that come up and, and those sorts of things. Speaking of that, um, we're starting now to get into the spring college visit season. Just this week, I've, I've scheduled like, uh, three, uh, college rep visits. So that's going to get, get started off here in the next couple of weeks. Uh, we don't have quite as many in the spring as we do in the fall but there'll, there'll be a bunch. And so one of the things I tell kids is, you know, just go to some of those. You might not be interested. You might not know that much about them, but just go to start hearing what the rep talks about helps you learn the questions you need to ask when you are going to a university or you're going to a, a rep visit of a school you're really interested in. Um, so, you know, look at, uh, encourage them to participate in, in those sorts of activities because that, that opens up a lot of, a lot of great uh, info for them. One of the tools that we've got on our school website, and uh, I don't know if we're gonna have time to show it tonight, but um, the Illinois Career Information System, 
Um, there's test prep on there for both ACT and SAT. There's also a lot of great um, uh, tools on there for interest inventory and skill inventory and that sort of thing to kind of get some ideas of what is it that I'm, I'm good at, I'm interested in, I should be looking for for potential career, that kind of thing. Um, and the login is there, first name, last name, the password is RLHS 2022, capital R. We talk about that when I meet with kids and you'll be able to see it better when the, when the rest of the uh, uh, information is in the way on your screen there. But um, yeah, those are some other other tools for you to use. Any questions anybody has here real quick off the bat? Right, yeah, the, the plan is we'll have this all recorded and posted on Counselor's Corner along with the PowerPoint. Yeah, yeah, yep. Let me see if I can pull up um, uh, our school website here real quick and Okay, so here in the counselor's corner, you see we've got things like uh, academic planning events. That's where you're going to see the recording from tonight. Um, college and career planning. What do I want to major in? What career am I seeking? Some great tools for you to use there. And it's just, you know, you go through and answer a bunch of questions and they come back with, okay, here's the five majors you should be thinking about, that sort of thing. Um, uh, here's some information about uh, dual credit and those sorts of things. Let's take a look under the, the college and career planning once more. This is where we'll get into uh, some more uh, details on things like the, um, the career information system that I talked about. Um, so it has stuff about what you want to do with your future. Here's the login process. So you see there. And uh, uh, so you got the username and password that, that, uh, that goes right there. But that's, they've got a whole system of, of uh, college test uh, prep programs, uh, a whole set of tools for, um, as you see, things looking at what I want to major in, um, uh, career interests and work environment assessment. Um, uh, the career information system, like I said, it's got an interest inventory and a skill inventory. And, and then it's got a tool on there that, that says, um, okay, what college do you want to go to? And they'll let you choose, okay, so what part of the country you want to go or what state do you want to go, you know, pick. And then you want to go to large school, small school, what size of school you want to go to? You want to go to public or private? Um, what, uh, what do you want to major in? And they've got basically like seven or eight questions like that that you answer. And then when you get to the end of that, it says, okay, here's a list of all the schools that meet your criteria. And if the list is too small, you go back and change the criteria a little bit and the list gets bigger. If the list is too big, you go back and adjust the criteria a little bit and the list gets smaller. But then, then you've got a list of schools. Okay, so then you just click on it. It'll take you right to that school's website and you can start figuring out what that school has. You might be interested in that sort of thing. So really cool tool. It's going to take some time to use. Um, we'll, be, we'll be doing some practice with it uh, later on this year with, with sophomores. But, uh, um, you know, it's there for you. You can go home this weekend and, and fill around with a bit. Um, uh, if you're done shoveling snow and all that sort of thing, but um, lots of lots of tools there, and lots of things for you to, to take a look at and, and jump into. So, questions? Okay, well, thanks for joining us tonight. Obviously, you know where to find me if you have uh, anything else that you have need for at this time. Be deliberate. Come up with a with a strategy. This is what we're going to do this month. This is what we're going to do this semester. This is what we're going to do this summer. This is what we're going to do, you know, first semester junior year of all those things, particularly though, take some time just to kind of help your kid get to know themselves a little bit and, and start figuring out that issue of, you know, what is it that God's really created me to do and what's he gifted me to do and what's that going to look like down the road? So um, they're, they'll, they'll benefit from that and it'll be a great experience uh, for you too. So thanks so much for coming tonight.